So let's talk about identifying the various items on our variable speed drive. Here we've got a big one. We're going to show you all the components from start to end. So over here, this is your input. So your three phase comes in here, line one, two, and three. Over here is your input snubber. Over here is your rectifier control board. So underneath here is your rectifier control bridge, your half control bridge, your thyristor diode modules. You can see the symbols over there. Okay, so there's three of them. Over there is a communication from the power board that controls this, as well as the 24 volts that it needs to power up. <coughs> From here, <coughs> your DC, positive and negative, goes to your capacitor bank, which is over there. So you've gone from AC over here to DC over here. So there's your capacitor bank over here on your DC bus. Up on top is the 24 volt power supplies that's the internal power supply of the VSD. <coughs> I don't know why I started this video with a frog in my throat. So, underneath the capacitors are the RGBTs. There's the heatsink over here, which is the cooling for the RGBTs. And over here is the heatsink for the rectifier. Um, so coming out of the RGBTs underneath here are your three phases over here. The the CT, the CTs, the current transformers live over here. That's your current feedback on the output over here, UVW. The control board plugs in over here. I'm not going to touch these pins because of our ESD concerns. The control board lives over here. That's why this thing looks incomplete. We're busy with the reboard here. Over here is a power lead which goes to that fan. That's the old one which we're replacing. And over here is the heating cooling fan, which we're also replacing. It's pretty tired. It's a big centrifugal fan. So it fits underneath here. Now this drive does not have any built-in inductors. So I'm going to show you a smaller frame size, which has got the inductance built in. So with this drive, you use external inductors. You use uh, input inductors over here. And if you'd have long motor cables, you'd have another inductor on the output of it over here. So that's the story with this drive. Let's look at a sm slightly smaller one. As you can see, this one's slightly smaller. And there's the input inductor. There's one of them. There's two more towards the back there. So, line one, two, and three over here. And there's your DC connections. Then, there's a control board on this one. Here's your three phases out, UVW. And then down below, your brake chopper, your positive, and your brake chopper transistor output, the collector down there. There's the earth connection over there. So this is a slightly smaller model. It is 134 amps in size. So that's what that looks like. So that, that's got internal um, input reactors. Now the next size down, they don't have that. They've got a DC link reactor, which lives inside here. 
uh, from a um, four kilowatt upwards they've got a DC link reactor inside so how the, the inductance gets done for the rectification varies on frame size what's practical and what's economical so that over here we back to the big one so on this one once again you can see the um, DC plus new break output and over there and that's a fan connection and that's the components of the VSD um, this one over here there's its control module now this is a more advanced drive as a result of that control module being on there um, okay the covers upside down but this is probably in the order of about 180 amps to 280 amps in capacity this drive these are 400 volt drives they go all the way up to 690 volt in uh, the voltage range they're low voltage drives so as you can see there's a join over here that's because this can operate as a inverter only of a common dc bus or it can op operate as a uh, rectifier with inverter of mains so that's why this can be split over here the joining can be seen here common dc bus system you feed it just with the dc then it's just an inverter section this is a complete drive that would work off mains coming in the top here this is the top part of the drive then over here that is in the bottom side of the drive so if you're standing in front of it you'd view it like that like so that's what that looks like so that's the components of the drive identified down there is the power board which controls the IGBTs and then there's further power supplies and stuff over there the, you can actually see the one IGBT over here that's it there they, they're big things they're the size of my hand there's four of them down there, one for each face and one for the brake chopper. Because these drives have internal brake choppers built into them. And then this would get the covers over here. And the control module lives on top over here. That's basically components on a uh, on a VSD, how to identify them, what they all do, and so on. From a certain size, the input bridge is um, half controlled with side assistors to slowly charge up the caps when you ply mains. And from, once they're charged, it operates just as a uh, uncontrolled bridge. From uh, Below certain size, this is a full diode bridge, and they use a resistor in this circuit to charge your capacitors. And once they're fully charged, a uh, relay bypasses that resistor, shunts it out, and carries the uh, load current. Once charge up is once it's in run and charge up is done, the drive's fully powered up. So two different rectifier methodologies are used depending on size on the, on the smaller ones it's cheaper to use diode bridges and resistor on the bigger ones it's more cost effective and more compact to use thyristors that's why there's a difference to have a, uh, a resistor and uh, bypa bypass relay for the DC bus would be massive on something this size so it's done like this on the size drive so that's a story with the rectification now these can be fed with um, more than one rectifier you can have um, 6 12 18 or 24 pulse rectification 
or you could have a active front end a um, four quadrant power supply system active front end feeding this DC um, which means that you don't have um, the harmonics problems you've got a power factor of one and it's four quadrant so energy recovered from the load can be fed this way back into the mains because of an active front end the these drives can operate as a, a motoring drive or as an active front end by um, parameter change so in operating as an active front end you've got a uh, filter inductor over here then you've got your four capacitors, then you've got a, another inductor, and then it goes to the main side on this side. It's, it's an LCL filter arrangement. Obviously there's a pre-charge needed as well to pour, charge up these caps before you close the contactor on this side, and then it synchronizes to the mains. That's how an active front end works. And then the energy in this thing flows that way. Or if you're regenerating, like an unwind or a winder, which under some circumstances recovers energy, um, the energy would go that way back towards the mains. Obviously, in that type of system, you have your, reg your regen drive and you have your motoring drive, and they couple together on the DC side through fuses. So that's the story with this. So there you've seen what it looks like inside these and uh, where the components are, where to find them. It's just an overview of drive construction and what they look like inside. Identifying components, we're not talking about drive operation and um, in-depth theory here. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little talk on what a drive looks like inside because we have an opportunity to see one on the inside it's very interesting stuff this is my life ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining me here today for this quick talk thanks for being here all the way to the end and watching my videos i really appreciate it take care and we'll see you back here sometime for more interesting stuff cheers